I was trying not to corpse. You ruined it. We have to go back. Because well, it's going to be too high up. That's the outtake, sorted. <laughs> Just got some huel in my teeth. Oh, God. Why do I drink this stuff? Because it's healthy and convenient. Kool-Aid. It's great. Kool-Aid. I'm so glad I started this cult. <laughs> Drinking the Kool-Aid. <clears throat> Hello YouTube, I'm Rich. And yeah, I'm um, Ben Barrett. And welcome to a new episode of The Weekend Escape. I'm on whatever that is. I, mm. This is a show where we catch you up on everything we've learned in this past week. For instance... Oh, me? Uh, yes, Ben, please try a little harder to live up to my expectations that have been laid down by our former Ben. Okay, fine. Um, for instance, I've learned that... What's wrong? Do you need another read-through to the script or something? I just don't want to say it, Rich. Right, it's fine, you're playing a character, just do what the script says. They all mean you don't they all know you don't mean it. I've learned that Alice is super great and we miss her a lot. Yes indeed, and I've learned that there is still a really big Ben Barrett shaped hole in my heart, made all the more obvious by this shambolic approximation of a Ben. But we are here to tell you what's been going on in the world of I PC gaming. Shave. I didn't shave this morning for this. I think it looks fine. Alright, it's time for the news. That's right. So you're new on the show, Ben, unlike mm. old Ben. Uh, for if, uh, if you're not familiar, the concept of news is right. something that's new okay. and shiny and people haven't heard before. Like me? I guess in the context of co-hosting The Weekend Escape. Yes, technically you are news, yes, but I also am. not really. Because oh. in the other room you're big shot deputy editor. This is true. Uh, no, when I say news, I mean more like the fact that Battle for Azeroth's beta has just started. That's the thing, right? You feel the need to constantly call back to the Blizzard Obsessed guy who doesn't do the show anymore. No, Does it make you feel better? About. What I do know is that the first batch of beta keys for the upcoming World of Warcraft expansion have been sent out to some lucky players. <laughs> huh? That means that even more people will be able to try out the features first tested in the Battle for Azeroth Alpha, including the three versus three island expeditions. In addition to the things that Alpha testers have already seen, the beta increases the level cap to 120. That's a pretty high number mm -hmm. if you're an infant. Come on, 120. If you want real numbers, uh, go and look at the view account on Ninja's Twitch stream. The ludicrously popular Fortnite streamer hit 680,000 concurrent viewers during his Las Vegas tournament uh, last weekend. Now, this broke his own personal best of 628,000 when he streamed with Drake back in March. At the time, that was the highest concurrent viewers anyone on Twitch had ever had, which means that, yes, Ninja is still the world record holder again. Ninja is one powerful streamer. Talking of things of immense power, the, ne the next Destiny 2 DLC has been revealed, and it's all about Rasputin the Warmind. That's an AI designed to protect humanity, and Rasputin did so using some pretty questionable logic when the darkness showed up. We'll be discovering much more about him in this next chapter. Oh, come on, who cares about Destiny 2 anymore? Even you, Mr. Destiny, have abandoned it on the floor like the corpse of the neighbor's dog after you... Well, after you what? It doesn't matter. Um, what I'm saying is, Bungie will really have to offer something to encourage players to return to the game. Yes, yes they will. I'm not saying Destiny 2 is a dead dog yet, if that's what you're suggesting, but something does need to be done. Hopefully the new Escalation Protocol missions, which like a horde mode, hurl waves of increasingly punishing enemies at you, will prove to be a compelling new PvE challenge, and the changes to Crucible will freshen up the PvP meta. You see, if Destiny was a cat, it wouldn't be having this problem right now. If Destiny was a cat? Yeah, like if it was a cat, it wouldn't be dead and buried under my patio, uh, like the dog. Move on, move on, move on. Okay, all right, fine. Uh, I mean, I'd play a game that people who like cats like, because people who like cats are better. Um, Dark Souls Remastered, for instance, which is very good, thus a cat game, uh, is in fact a double cat game because it's 50% off on PC. This whole cat game thing, I'm not buying it, but uh, fair enough. And also, that's a little bit misleading about... Mm, it's fine, yeah, it's 50% off if you already own Dark Souls Prepared to Die Edition, so you need that's two right. cat games. If that's in your Steam library, the new HD Shiny version will cost you exactly half as much as it normally would. Um, there was a rumour about this happening months ago, but this week Bandai Namco uh, confirmed it to be true. Mm. Prepare to Die Edition will be removed from Steam on May the 9th though, so if you miss that, you'll have to just buy Remastered on May the 25th. Not that I expect you're in the market for buying two versions of Dark Souls in the same month. Mm, I mean, I reckon I could complete Dark Souls in 24 hours, so yeah. I could buy Prepare to Die Edition now, rinse through it in a week, and then mm -hmm. play it again when Remastered releases, just to see how big a difference it makes. Sure. Sure. Talking of wildly unambitious and unrealistic ideas, PUBG is going all esports with the PUBG Global Invitational. 20 teams from around the world will compete for a share of a $2 million prize pool. Which is what, like a dollar for every person playing it? I'm not very good at maths, but that no, sounds about right. That, that seems wildly 
inaccurate, but there it is in the script, mm-hmm. and we have to say it. Regional tournaments will kick off in North America, Europe, and Asia soon, and the best teams will compete in the global finals in Berlin in July. Two winning teams will be crowned, one for first-person mode and another for third-person. Imagine if it was Cattle Royale, though. Ah, okay, Cattle Royale. I think mm-hmm. it, like, a hundred cows leap into battle. No. Claire Unknown's bovine grounds. No, Richard, deliberately misunderstanding me. I mean, Cattle Royale, like cats, good ah. cats. Like the cats Brigitte has in Overwatch, all of which have names. Do they now? Yeah, they have. The white one's called Mitzi, uh, and that's a genuine Overwatch lore fact. Mm-hmm. We asked the game's lead writer, Michael Chu, and he told us so. Um, he wouldn't tell us the names of the other ones, though, so I don't know if it's a trust issue. I'm not sure. Right, and that's what you consider news, is it? Yes, Let yes. Let me tell you this, it's literally on the site. News needs to be up to the minute. It needs right. to be timely and relevant. Oh, Check me out, watch me work. Okay. If you want to talk about uh, Brigitte's cat, so you need to link it into something fresh. Overwatch are, of course, a team of heroes defending the world from evil, such as Doomfist. And do you know who else, pay attention, do you know who else is defending the world from a big guy with a big glove? The Avengers, who just happened to be starring in one of the biggest film events of the year, showing in a cinema near you right now. This is, this is a video game show. Why are you talking about films? We can't talk about Infinity War here. Just you watch me. Oh. If you love Marvel movies, here are the best superhero games on PC. Infinity War is one of Marvel Comics' largest crossover events, bringing together dozens of superheroes to team up against impossible odds. Sometimes though, heroes don't see eye to eye. Instead of working together, they begin to fight amongst themselves. This was the focus of the famous Civil War storyline. Not just an immensely successful Marvel movie, this event was also rendered in playable form in Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. An isometric brawler with just a little hint of Diablo to it, Ultimate Alliance 2 asks you to put together a group of four heroes and fight for their side of the superhero registration battle. While your objectives are simple dungeon crawling fare, there is surprising depth to the combat system. Every character has a unique fusion ability that alters depending on who they're teamed up with. So, for example, Captain America can deflect Storm's lightning bolts off his shield and redirect them at enemies. With over 20 characters, that's a colossal amount of combinations to discover and make use of. The big question, of course, is can Hulk do a fastball special with Wolverine? Yes he can, and yes, it's awesome. If heroes beating seven bells out of each other is what you like, then there's no better example than Injustice 2. A fighting game based on DC Comics, it reimagines Batman's universe in a world where Superman went bad. As you can imagine, this is a recipe for disaster, as well as a gleefully bonkers plot. Injustice 2 is perhaps the best presented fighter ever made. Ludicrously well-produced cutscenes tell the story, which feels notably on the button with recent favourites like Supergirl, Green Arrow and Black Canary taking major roles alongside Batman and Harley Quinn. In battle, characters hurl each other through the scenery with a sense of weight and power rarely seen in games. Fight engine itself is deep, but even a button masher can easily activate some absurdly entertaining abilities, such as the Flash catapulting an opponent through time and smashing them into the Sphinx's nose. At last, the mystery is solved. Comic book movies have had a habit of going a bit dark and moody lately. If you're seeking something with a more joyful tone, then LEGO Marvel Super Heroes is here to save you. As far as gameplay goes, it's entirely LEGO as usual. Puzzles block your path through the world and you'll need to smash things and rebuild them into useful contraptions to help you advance. The true beauty of Marvel Super Heroes though is the richness of the universe from which it draws. There are untold hundreds of nods to the Marvel comics, cartoons and films, with various levels of humour aimed at both those fully learned and entirely new to the world. And since the game draws several cues from the cinematic interpretations of the characters, this is probably the only place that you'll ever see the movie X-Men mansion in the same city as the MCU Avengers Tower and Sony's Amazing Spider-Man Oscorp building. I know, right? We can hardly keep calm about it ourselves. Rocksteady's Batman Arkham series is undisputably in the very top tier of superhero games, but which of the series is best, Asylum or City? Well, neither actually, it's Arkham Knight. Yes, yes, we know, it launched in an absolute state on PC and it took an absurdly long time to fix, but now it's playable, it absolutely deserves the crown. Of all the Arkham games, Knight is the one that feels the most like a Batman comic. Rather than attempting to crowbar every villain into the story, like a conveyor belt of evil, the final game in the series focuses on just Scarecrow and the mysterious Arkham Knight. This results in a more fundamentally satisfying plot, and really demonstrates Rocksteady's writing talent when it comes to twists, even if they were entirely expected. As for Batman's other famous adversaries, they all get their own limelight in side quest lines. This aids in making Gotham, which is now fully explorable, feel like a city plagued by pockets of independent crime. 
We'll admit that the tank Batmobile bits are pretty naff though. Quite how Rocksteady managed to mess that up is a mystery tougher to crack than a Riddler trophy. The Arkham games focus entirely on the exploits of the caped crusader, but what of the man beneath the cowl? The moral quandaries of Bruce Wayne are the territory of Telltale in their retelling of the Batman mythos. Over two seasons so far, Telltale's Batman has explored the nature of Wayne's dual personality and his obligations to the city of Gotham. Several points of the story demand the player choose between sending Bruce or Batman into a situation, essentially a choice between social influence or terrifying violence. As Bruce, such a situation plays out in the traditional Telltale format, multiple dialogue choices and timed responses with the wrong answers potentially leading to disaster. As Batman, the game riffs more on his prowess as a detective than as a fighter, using his gadgets to analyse evidence and his intellect to connect the clues. Perhaps its biggest pull, though, is the fact that it's set early in Batman's career. So early, in fact, that you'll be witness to how each of his actions mould the rise of his archenemy, the Joker. Okay, so I think I'm getting the hang of this show now. Mm, steady on, let's not tempt fate. Rude. No, I don't know what's next. Ah, well, okay, it's the sale section. Okay, so we go clothes shopping, sale at Urban Outfitters. Nope, still a video game show. Fine, so we buy games on sale then? No, know. again, we tell the people what's on sale on Steam or indeed other sites. Oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. A lot more sense, actually. Yes, sure. Okay. So I'll start. Up first is Near Automata, which is currently on sale until the 6th of May, which is mm. ages away. So you've got a while to pick it up. It's not that far. It's a lovely 50% off at the moment and is pretty good, so it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, I think I'm getting the gist of this now. It's good. making sense. Near Automata tells the story of a trio of androids 2B. Or not. Very good. Nice Shakespeare reference. 9S and or not. A. Ugh and A2, in a world where humanity has been forced from the Earth by mechanical machines from a different world. As a last resort, humans have sent a force of android soldiers to destroy the invaders, so that's where you come in. It's an open world game with incredible battles, intriguing characters, and a rich story. Or not. Ugh, oh, whatever. So up next is Rocket League, which has 40% off at the moment, up until May the 1st. Hey, nice job, you're picking us this up quickly. Thanks mate, patronising much. Don't interrupt. Rocket League, as I'm sure most THE people know, is the football or soccer meets driving multiplayer game. With booster rigged vehicles that smash into balls for out of this world goals and even incredible saves across many different arenas, Rocket League uses an advanced physics system that simulates realistic interactions. Sounds sciencey. I wish we could simulate realistic interactions. There's also the possibility to customise your cars, play in single player, unlock items and new vehicles, track your stats and play online or locally with some friends. Or even better, colleagues. You don't have any friends then. Mm, I have better than friends. Colleagues. Up next is Bastion, which is a lovely little indie action game with a fantastic soundtrack. It's got 75% off for only a few more days up until April 30th, so make sure you get your hands on it as soon as you can. Bastion, isn't that the uh, character from popular Blizzard game Overwatch? Nice, you finally figured out what show you're on. Thank you. I did have my suspicions you weren't going to be as good as the original then, I'll be wow. honest. But uh, maybe you can bring it back. Well, I'll put the beard back on, the script says, but I screwed it up so we can't. Yeah, we can't, we probably can't. Bastion the game, not the character, redefines storytelling in games with a reactive narrator who comments on your every move. You can explore more than 40 stunning hand-painted environments as you figure out the secrets of the Calamity, a surreal disaster which fractured the world. There's a whole array of upgradable weapons to wield and enemy types to defeat. Now that. And now it's time for Too Long Didn't Read, the part of the show where we walk you guys through two patches that have been recently applied to popular games, and we artificially make it interesting and competitive by challenging each other to do it in 10 seconds from mm. memory. Mm. You're familiar I, with the... I didn't need to do any of that, that was all redundant. No, I knew... I know it all. I watch this weekly. It's, uh, oh, well, it's a great you. show. That's very, that's very kind. Honour to be here. Okay, great. Uh, well, uh, Ben is going to walk you... is going to kick things off by walking you through the latest patch to Fractured Space, aren't you, Ben? In three, two, one, go. So, uh, drawing pins, uh, cardboard structure, uh, TV, uh, Rich, Alice, Kieran, Fallout, and Kaiser Sose. Okay, that's 10 seconds. I can't help but notice that those are all things in the room. If you are interested in what's going on in Fractured Space in the last stand update, uh, there's a new premium campaign, there's an improved tutorial, there's new progression medals, no. there's a reworked MMR decay, fixed limited stacks on plasma weapons, and the range of the org cannon has been reduced by 10,000. Spoiler alert. Well, I mean, spoiler alert, you've just said that those things are things coming to fractured it's, space, but coincidentally, well, um, they are also... I think I've won. I've, met, I've convinced people that I've won. Well, you've laid down a harsh... psychological trick. A harsh challenge there. Yeah. Uh, I'll try and yeah. match it. In uh, everything coming to uh, League of Legends in patch 8.9. If you count me in, please, Ben. Oh, uh, five, four, three, two, one. 
Okay, uh, so Sona's a uh, AD has increased, Poppy's movement speed has decreased, Wrong. Lux's HP increase per level has made decreased, that up. Ivan's root call and missile's width has increased. That's in the room over Dr. there. Dr. Manto's health regen has increased, and a moon lose bandage costs less. Is your mum proud of you? <laughs> I, oh. What a question to undermine our entire. I don't. Not I just don't, not just this section, but arguably our entire careers. We don't have to tot it up. It's clear that I won. <sighs> there you go. That's that's that. Glad to be here. <clears throat> now it's time for Rich's fan mail. Uh, it's not actually called that. Don't, then. don't worry about him. Oh. Yeah, well, good stuff. You really are catching on. It's not hard. I just have to read what it says. Yeah, but you were struggling with that a little while back. Oh well, this one says in big red letters, Rich's fan mail. It's still not called that. Yeah, we just need to be sure it was legible. That's why. Okay, well, it's a bit out of character, I suppose, for Alice to call a section that. Yeah, well, she works in mysterious ways, eh, doesn't she? Not yeah. really. She's pretty basic. Oh, she's not here this week. Anyway, Ben, what's our first comment? So, it's on our 11 best strategy games. Wait, hang on, that's not right. It's meant to be the, um, the... No, I'm just reading what's in the script, like I was told. Mm. Alice must have come in and changed it before we came to shoot. Basic. Anyway, I'm going to ignore your internal battle and continue. Our 11 best strategy games video, Peter says, Civ 5 is prettier but dumbed down compared to Civ 4, but the best Civ game is Caveman of Cosmos, a huge mod for Civ 4. That is a great shout. The full fantasy conversion mod Fall from Heaven, of course, casts a long shadow over the Civ modding community, but Caveman to Cosmos could well be said to be the best Civ game in that it doesn't fundamentally change what Civ aims to do, but instead massively expands it, adding eras to the start and the end of the timeline, along with dozens of new units and systems. Nerd. Alice told you to say that, didn't she? No. Oh. <clears throat> well, moving on, I'm going to put in the comments that you were meant to say five minutes ago. On our old How to Install a New SSD video, Epic Hawk says, Chris Hemsworth? Chris who? Hemsworth. I know who. The guy that's starring as Thor right now in Avengers Infinity War, the biggest film of the moment. Let me stop you there. A, because I, I don't care. Um, and B, because on last week's video, uh, the crate says, Rich is a nerd, though. King of strategy nerds. Wear the crown with pride, nerd. I feel like your intention was to insult me there, you see, but uh, he went on to call me the king of the strategy nerds. <laughs> I don't he know if you... wants to be king of the nerds. Well, me, actually. Does your mum want you to be that? I, I don't care. I'm an independent man. Well, this has been a horrendous ordeal, Rich, but we've made it to the end, so I'm glad we haven't fallen out. Haven't we? No. Oh. Okay, well being dramatic, it's only a show about shopping. Your games! Ben, it's a show about video games. Shopping for games. Well, whatever. It's time to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. Oh, me? Yes! Oh, okay, right, right, fine. Last week we gave away a Creed t-shirt, water bottle and flannel, and the lucky winner is Emily Hutchinson. So well done, Emily. Uh, this week, the prize up for grabs is a shopping trip with the host of your choice! Games, Ben! To... It's a show about games! Calm down, mate. I take my shopping very seriously. It's not a game. This week, you lovely folk have the opportunity to win a wonderful Far Cry 5 backpack. That's quite fetching, actually. Um, not a pair of skinny jeans in sight, though. I would have mine. Ah, sure. It doesn't really go. Anyway, do make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you back here next week. I'm never going to do this again. Bye! I hope not. <laughs> New gesture. That's for making your paragraphs too long! Readability is important! <laughs> We must flow on camera! <laughs> You're not helping! It's supposed to be banter! <laughs> I'm so bored now! <laughs> Amicable, friendly! Go away! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>